Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm Melissa. Thanks for stopping in. So before we get into this video, please give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you're alerted whenever I upload a new video. And let's get into it. Today's gonna be a little bit of a different type of video. It is in collaboration with the American Diabetes Association's campaign, hashtag everyday reality, to raise awareness on diabetes and some of the things that diabetics have to go through, things that they have to endure every day. I know that everyone has their own problems, everyone has their own situations that maybe they're dealing with every day. This is just from the diabetic perspective and to help bring more awareness to that. I know being in the holiday season, at least for me being a type two diabetic, can be a little stressful, um, especially with all of the holiday parties going around, potlucks at work, neighbors dropping off goodies, getting together with family and friends and celebrating the season. It can be a little stressful. I know a very common misconception about diabetics is that you can never have sugar, you can never have anything that you love to eat anymore. And that is just so not true. There are some changes that diabetics have to make during the holiday season that maybe a lot of people aren't aware of. Um, for instance, you know, take someone who's on a diet and if they go to a party, they kind of have to be mindful on what foods that they're selecting, making sure that they're healthy and then they're not um, high caloric foods. It's very similar with diabetics. However, not only are we trying to make sure that we're selecting foods that are healthy for us, but we're also trying to think in our minds when we're looking at a food, is this food going to spike my blood sugar to where I'm gonna feel sleepy and I'm gonna wanna leave the party? Or is this something that's gonna make my blood sugar crash to where I'm feeling cold and clammy and jittery? So there's just additional things that as a diabetic you have to consider when you're making food selections. So when I'm at a social gathering, there's a few things that I like to keep in the back of my mind to help me kind of navigate through social gatherings during the holiday so that I can still, you know, have a good time and enjoy myself, but also that my blood sugar is not completely wreaking havoc. So these are my four tips on how to survive the holiday season. Well, no, not even the holiday season any type of social gathering, whether it be Thanksgiving or Christmas or New Year's, a birthday party, an office potluck, anything. You can basically use these tips at any type of social gathering where you may or may not be indulging in maybe some not so healthy foods. So number one is eat normally. I know it can be easy to think, oh, I'm gonna be going to a party this evening. I'm gonna be indulging in a lot of different types of foods. So I'm just gonna skip breakfast. I'm not really gonna eat lunch. That way I'm not gonna be going overboard as far as my calories. That thinking can get you into some trouble. It can cause your blood sugar to spike and fall unexpectedly. So you wanna make sure that you're maintaining an even level if, with your blood sugar. So eat like a normal day. Have your breakfast, have your coffee, whatever it is that you have for lunch, eat like you normally would. And then that way, when you get to that social gathering, you can become a nibbler. And that's what I like to think of it in my, in my head. So what I do is I'll take a plate and immediately half of it, you know, I'll fill it with veggies and proteins because you know there's going to be meat and cheese trays and veggie trays. Those are always at those parties. So I fill about half my plate with that. The other half, I look around and I see what are some of the foods or the treats that maybe look really appealing to me and that I would like to indulge in. I take little portions, a little portion here, a little portion there, and put those on my plates. That way I'm still able to enjoy everything that I want, but it's in moderation and I make sure that I have, you know, a good healthy portion of veggies and proteins. So number two, is be prepared. And when I mean be prepared, I mean with your medications. So whether that means bringing your oral medications with you that you take regularly so that you don't miss the scheduled time or bringing along your glucometer and your insulin, being prepared to use them accordingly. Now, not only with bringing your medications, but one thing you wanna keep in mind is that you also wanna bring either a small snack or maybe some glucose tabs to help combat low blood sugar because that can be very common as well especially when you're indulging in foods that are high carbohydrate, high sugar intake, causing your blood sugars to rise and fall. Which brings me to number three, which kind of ties in with the number two, is enjoying an adult beverage. If you're gonna be drinking alcohol, you wanna make sure that you eat something beforehand. You never wanna to go to a party on an empty stomach and start 
throwing back the drinks because that's going to spike your blood sugar. And if you drink alcohol on an empty stomach, there isn't going to be anything in your system to help stabilize your glucose levels. So once your body metabolizes that alcohol on your system, your blood sugar is gonna crash, which can be dangerous. So you wanna make sure that you're prepared. Last but not least, Tip number four is share the holiday cheer. And what I mean by that is share a healthy, diabetic-friendly dish or a treat to bring with the event that you're attending. That way, if there aren't any like healthy or diabetic-friendly options that maybe you want to partake in, you will have something there that you can have that you know is not gonna cause your blood sugar to spike and to crash. So one thing that I do like to bring around the holiday season is cinnamon star cookies. And they are so good, they're so simple. These cinnamon star cookies are not only good for diabetics, but for anyone following like a keto diet or a low carb diet or someone who's just counting their macros or watching what they're eating because for one cookie, and they're pretty good sized cookies, it's about 35 calories and a little over one gram of carb and like a gram of protein. I think like one or two fat. The one thing that I love about these cookies is that not only is it diabetic friendly, nobody ever suspects that they're sugar free. Everyone's usually impressed that I slaved all day in the kitchen making these little culinary masterpieces when really I spend like 15 minutes. So if you want to know how to make these cookies, keep watching. I'm going to take you in the kitchen and show you how I make these bad boys. Okay, so this recipe only calls for five ingredients. The first thing you want to do is take three eggs. Now you're only going to need the egg whites. So go ahead and separate your whites from your yolks. Put the whites into a mixing bowl and get one cup of powdered sweetener. I use Swerve, but you can use Stevia. You can use Erythritol. As long as it's powdered, you need one cup of that. Add that into the egg whites and you're gonna take a hand mixer and you're gonna mix this really well. It's gonna take about four you know, to five minutes to mix this up until it forms soft peaks. You want it to be a really thick like pudding consistency, just like it is here, it's really thick. And then you want to go ahead and reserve about three tablespoons of this. Just put it in a small little dish and you can put this in the fridge and set it aside. We're gonna be brushing this on top of the cookies right before we bake them. So now that you have that put aside, take three cups of your almond flour, add that into your mixture. Now also into that mixture, you want to add in your cinnamon. So go ahead and put in two teaspoons of ground cinnamon right into that mixture there. Now you need to take one teaspoon of coffee grounds. It can be any kind. I like Folgers, so I just use that. One teaspoon of coffee grounds goes right into that mixture and then you're gonna to wanna to mix it up. It's gonna be kind of crumbly. It, to me, it kind of looks like stuffing in a bowl once I mix it up. And then I kind of like smush it all together into, until it forms a ball of dough. I'm gonna take that a ball of dough. I need to lay out a sheet of wax paper. Put that ball of dough right on top of there. Put another sheet of wax paper on top of that. And you're gonna get your rolling pin and roll that out to about um, an inch, half inch thick. Now one trick is once you have it all rolled out, you wanna stick it in the freezer. So I just pop it onto a cookie sheet, put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes just so that it's easy to cut out the shapes. So now I decided to cut out stars, so I'm gonna cut out those star shapes. And since it's been in the freezer, it's super easy, like the dough doesn't stick, it just, it is so easy, trust me. Pop it in the freezer for 10 minutes. So go ahead and cut out your shapes. And I think I was able to make about 10, maybe 10 or 12 of these. They don't expand or get bigger when you bake them, so it doesn't really matter how far apart you know you have them on the cookie sheet. Go ahead and get those laid out all on your cookie sheet. Go and get that um, egg white mixture that we set aside and you're gonna brush that on top of the cookies. Now this is taking place of the frosting and it is so good. So now preheat your oven to 250 degrees, pop these in there for about 25 minutes and then you end up with these delicious, chewy, soft, star cookies that already have frosting baked right into the top of them. I hope you like these cookies. Give them a try. These cookies are 
cookies are so good. If you make these, comment below and let me know what you think of them. Take them to your next party, social gathering. These don't have to be stars. You can cut these out into any shape that you want. I just wanted to share some of my everyday realities that I deal with as far as being diabetic during the holiday season. And I hope that it was informative and that you were able to maybe relate or take some information away from this video that could help you. I do want to say thank you to the American Diabetes Association for their Everyday Reality campaign. It would be great if you could make a donation to their campaign. I will put the information down in the description box. And I hope that everyone has a happy and safe holiday season. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.